Hello and welcome to my lab. This is going to be another PSOC tutorial and uh, this time we're going to be going over interrupt pins and uh, we're also going to touch on how to put the microcontroller to sleep and then wake it back up using that pin. For those of you who don't know what an interrupt is, imagine you have your processor just chugging along, going through your code linearly like it always does. An interrupt will cause the processor to put down whatever it's doing and then it can be pointed to a bit of code that you can write specifically for that interrupt. So you can have multiple interrupts. Of course, we're only gonna use one here. The processor will then run all the way through that little piece of code that you write, uh, and then it'll go right back to what it was doing. It'll pick it back up and go, you know, if it was in the middle of a function, it'll go right back to processing that function. Now you have to be a little bit careful with these, uh, but they're extremely helpful. For instance, you could have a hardware timer that will cause an interrupt periodically and then use that to update information for a display regularly, asynchronously from the rest of your code, which means that um, if you're doing like a lot of data processing, you might have a function that just takes a really long time to process. And if you did that and had a display on one processor, one core, then your, your display would freeze while you're running this function over here. Well, in this case, the function over here will run as long as it can, get interrupted, Go over here, do some things, come back, and it'll just keep going. So it's very handy for displays and, uh, well, it, it comes up a lot. You can also uh, set up hardware pins, which is what we're going to be doing here. So, uh, like a button, you can press the button, and instead of having to, to pull that pin continuously to see if the button is pressed, you can actually just have an interrupt set to uh, trigger off that pin, so that you can just be going along in your code, then the button is pressed, it'll stop that code, come over here, do whatever it is you need to do, and then come back to it. So that's what we're gonna do here. We're gonna use the button built into the board on this uh, PSOC 49, which is basically the same as the 59, except it's a PSOC 4. And I'm actually gonna use the uh, kit prog device that I snapped off of the previous kit 59 board. And uh, this can just uh, plug into this board and program it. Because this one, this one doesn't have a JTAG connector like I use on the other ones, and um, you can program it through a, a serial interface on this, but it doesn't, this is not a kit prog like this one. So, small detail. So anyway, what we're gonna do to set this thing up is have it so that uh, the microcontroller is going to turn on an LED and go to sleep. It's gonna go into what we call deep sleep. There's different versions, but we're just gonna do deep sleep here. Then when uh, the button is pressed, it's going to trigger an interrupt that will wake up the processor, and then uh, the processor will turn the LED off and wait for you to let go of the button again, at which point it will go back to sleep. So it really uh, results in the, the microcontroller just being asleep while the button is not pressed, and the LED will be on to indicate that it's sleeping. Once we press it, the in LED will go off, and uh, the processor is just gonna sit there awake waiting for the button. It's gonna just continuously pull the button. And uh, what that'll allow me to show you the uh, difference in power usage when the thing's asleep versus when it's awake. And so that'll be interesting to look at. So let's just jump right into the setup here. Let's just start by adding a pin to the blank project here. I'll, I'm just gonna call it uh, SW for uh, switch. Then we'll set it to have no hardware connection, resistive pull up, and on the input tab, we'll set the uh, interrupt to falling edge. This will add a little node at the bottom of the block so that we can add our little interrupt object. You'll find the interrupt object under the systems tab. All we have to do with this guy is name it, so we're gonna call it uh, SW for switch and then ISR. ISR stands for uh, interrupt service routine, which is just the system that handles all the interrupts. Then let's add the pin for the LED. Once again, uh, no hardware connection, and uh, we'll just be co controlling this through the software. Now let's uh, assign the pins here. Uh, on the uh, kit 49, the uh, LED is on port one, pin six, and the switch is on port zero, pin seven. Then don't forget to build the project because that generates all the um, auto-generated code that you need from, from the hardware configuration. After that, we can then just jump into uh, programming. To set up the function we want to run on our interrupt, we'll use a compiler macro. That's how it works in the PSOC here. It's a little weird, but the argument for this uh, macro is actually going to be the name of our interrupt function that we're defining. So uh, when the interrupt happens, we'll wait for 50 milliseconds. This is simply going to be a, a debounce for the switch, and that way I don't have to add any other hardware or anything to debounce the switch. Then the LED will be turned off, and we'll just create a loop here 
that will uh, wait for the button to be um, released again. Now it's very important that I tell you that you should never actually use a loop like this in an interrupt. It's, it's terrible, don't, don't do it. Uh, because interrupts do actually interrupt your code. And uh, that happens to be what we want to do here, but that really has no practical use in a normal program. So for illustrative purposes, we're doing it here to show you that it actually completely stops all the code from running in your main loop. If your uh, interrupt code is too lengthy or has a, an undeterminate loop in it, um, man, that can be a real pain to debug. That's a spurious issue that um, can happen anywhere in your code. Sometimes it might be a problem, sometimes it might not be a problem, and uh, you, you really don't want to have to chase that down if you fix that. So there's your public service announcement. Keep your interrupts short and loopless. Anyway, back to it. Uh, once the switch is released, then another delay for the debounce. Um, we'll turn the LED back on and uh, clear the interrupt before exiting. Notice we're not actually putting it uh, to sleep in this interrupt. That's going to be in our main loop later. But once that function is set up in the little macro that we've made, then we can call this function in the initialization code. This is going to set up the function that we just defined as the function that is pointed to by our interrupt. So when the interrupt happens, it's gonna point the uh, processor directly to that function. It'll run through that function, go back to what it was doing. Finally, in the main loop, we will just call this function to put the processor into uh, deep sleep. So now you'll see, as I said earlier, um, the interrupt just completely stops us from running the main loop. So the only reason we don't go back to sleep is that the interrupt is stopping the main code from running. And once we let go of the interrupt, it'll go back to the main loop and just go to sleep. The hardware interrupt pin automatically awakes the uh, processor from a deep sleep, so there's no setup we have to do there. So any hardware pin is gonna just wake up the processor automatically if you're in a sleep state. So now let's program it and test it out. Okay, here we are. I've got the uh, power supply hooked up. So as soon as I turn this on, this is gonna read the actual current going into the device. Here we go. So note that the LED is on, and so the power we're getting here, or the amperage that we're drawing here is uh, mostly going into that LED. Now if I press the button, the LED goes off, and our amperage actually goes up. Of course, we're down in the weeds of what we can sense on this power supply. But the amperage is actually going up because the uh, processor is taking so much more. Then when I let go, processor goes back to sleep, LED turns on, and uh, this isn't quite as different as I was hoping it would be. So let's actually take the LED out, now that you've seen that, you know, it does work. But uh, let's take the LED out Try it again, and then we'll take a look at what this is afterwards. Here we go, LED is removed. And, uh, okay, six milliamps. Turned on, and yep. So, it's uh, 12 while it's running, which makes sense. Um, I would expect that to be lower. Um, oh, okay. Well, this, this serial, the uh, serial to USB converter is probably chewing up all that power there. So that's probably where that's coming from. You know what, I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut this off and just see what happens. Okay, there we go, they're separate now. Let's turn this back on. Oh yeah, there we go. There you go. That, that makes a lot more sense. Four milliamps while it's running, essentially zero. I mean, it's gonna be using, you know, micro amps. So there you go, you can put it to sleep and it'll use micro amps and that's, that's good when you have like a battery powered remote processor or something uh, so that you can just have it collect a data sample every hour or something and just have the battery last for years. So that's where you'd want to use something with the, the sleep or whatever, um, you know, watches and stuff would use that. So there's a quick tutorial for you. Um, interrupts can be a little bit intimidating up front, but once you get used to uh, the ins and outs, it's really quite simple. You just set up a little function and you want to keep it nice and short and keep in mind that at any point in your code, that interrupt could call and you stop whatever you're doing and you go to uh, this interrupt. So that means you can't do things like, um, you, you can't expect a function to complete in X amount of time anymore because it's no, no longer deterministic with cycles because you could spend 50 cycles on function A, interrupt, go to your interrupt, 
come back after you know 80 cycles or something and then spend another 200 cycles on this function and uh, so your function might be variable at that point so so you want to use hardware timers instead of counting on cycles taking exactly the right amount of time and all that but once you get used to that it's um it's pretty straightforward and it's incredibly useful life is so much easier once you get used to uh, interrupts and how to use them also, the sleep function is pretty handy if you uh, want to use a battery or something and you, and you uh, want it to last a long time. And that's about it. So uh, with all that said, thank you for watching and uh, we'll see you next time.